Yeah. Okay. And one, two, three, that'll do it. That'll That's do good it. enough. Okay. That's good enough, man. Okay, I am with uh, Bob from North Idaho, and we are in Mexico City, about as close as you can get to the middle of it. And uh, you really should have pointed the camera that way and get the uh, the lens. Yeah, the sun though. Yeah. yeah, I know it's getting hurt on the sun. Not not perfect. Uh, but Bob is actually getting ready to leave this morning, so I'm catching him as he's running out the door. And uh, if you've ever ridden a motorcycle or a vehicle in Mexico City, combat, we'll find out. Yeah, you know, really, it's busy, but at least everybody else is kind of watching out for you, yeah. which was not the case in Guatemala. <laughs> all right. We'll get to all the above. Um, so Bob is actually heading north. I'm heading south. We're cr we crossed here in Mexico City. And uh, we're going to learn a little bit about Bob. So Bob, why don't you take us, uh, uh, give us a brief history of you. Okay. Um, mostly born and raised in Eastern Washington. Uh, spent a little bit of time growing up in Kentucky, where my father's family is still lives. Um, and uh, had a good career in the fire service, retired from the Spokane Fire Department. Um, and retired early so that I could do this and was getting ready to plan the big trip south like Finn is currently on and uh, then I met somebody mm -hmm. and that's not a sad thing no. <laughs> despite my case just a plan um, changer. just a plan changer so I'm engaged right now to a wonderful lady that also enjoys traveling and as well, when I talk about the trip, I mean, she actually has been on this trip with me, just that her time is more limited than mine. So, okay. So currently I live in Kellogg, Idaho, um, where we enjoy the mountains and the skiing and the, the summer motorcycle riding. And it's a, it's a good place to be as and, far as those things go. Gotcha. And you oh, how long have you been in Kellogg? Uh, only three and a half years now, okay. pushing four years. All right. And we moved there during the pandemic and then worked out well for us. And has travel always been a component in everything you've done or something you've always strived for? Or is this a new phase in your life traveling? For a lot of people, it is. Um, I've always had the desire to travel and never actually took the step to travel much. Uh, I took a few trips. I went to like Scotland one time back in the 90s and that's about it. And, you know, a little bit of travels around the United States, but it wasn't until um, the mid 2010s. So around 2015, I had a KLR fall in my lap and I had been thinking about getting back into writing. I, I wrote a little bit as a, uh, when I was in high school, had a enduro, we called it back then, not a dual sport. Um, and, uh, then in my thirties, I bought a road bike and I hated it because it didn't have cup holders. And that's just where I was at that point in my life. I wanted that convenience more than the open air, but that KLR fell in my lap and literally changed my life. I went on a, uh, about a week long camping trip with a buddy who also was on a first generation KLR and, uh, we went up to around Glacier National Park in Northwest Montana and uh, just opened my eyes as to what I could do on a motorcycle and how enjoyable it was just to wander around at your pace. You were not as limited where you wanted to go by being in a car and just it, for me, something I found was being on the motorcycle, uh, you're more in the environment you're traveling through rather than being than just looking at it as you go by the the sensory experience for me is just so much more rich and the klr event was how long ago that was back in uh 15. okay Four, so 14 and 15. okay so i yeah i'm just kind of i'm interested to find out when people were started in their life started getting into motorcycle travel yeah, for you it I sounds was, later in life i was pushing 50 years old when before, that happened before this style of traveling right, right. bit you all right and so just started riding uh on that trip i discovered that the klr while it's 
can do a whole lot of things okay. It wasn't great at very many of them. Mm -hmm. And especially trying to pass traffic on hills <laughs> while loaded. It's not good at that. You can put a lot in that milk crate. You can, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I had a milk crate. I mean, I, I had the true KLR <laughs> experience. <laughs> okay. And uh, so I ended up uh, buying a 2014 BMW in 2016. Gotcha. And by the way, folks, this is a picture of his rig. I will get a shot of him um, as he's leaving this morning. So this is his setup. I always like to show people that there is a motorcycle involved in this. Okay. So this is the photo of your bike right now, uh, all set up. Uh, as he leaves today or this morning after this interview. Um, but you got the 2014 F800 and then yeah. that's, I'm assuming that started a whole nother uh, yeah. stage of, holy crap, I can go far. Yeah, and then uh, took my first trip to Baja, like so many of us in the Western United States, that was my first big trip. And, and it just kind of cemented what I wanted to do. Right. And, and I ended up retiring nine months later. Yeah, you, you literally retired early just so you could do this. Yes. Right. The, the Some other reasons, but that was a big component. That was a big, gotcha. Um, and you, how many times have you been to Mexico now? Uh, I've been to Baja at least five, you know, sp specific right. trips to Baja. Okay. Um, one of those included going my first trip to the Copper Canyon. And then um, I've been the length of Mexico now twice. Okay. So in 2021, I rode to Cancun and uh, Vicky, my fiance, uh, I flew to Florida to meet her and her mom for the first time. And then mm -hmm. she came back to Cancun with me and we rode okay. through Southern Mexico uh, for a couple weeks. And she, Vicky passed the test. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Vicky's big complaint about that ride was that she couldn't ride her own motorcycle. Okay. And so the year after that, last winter, in winter of 2023, I took her to Baja with her motorcycle. And we, that was her first ride on her bike doing that and just, she loved it. And, okay. and so this year, um, she met me in Guatemala City. That's right. Yeah, you basically rode down to Guatemala. She right. flew in, you guys had, did your thing in Guatemala. Right and then she flew back. Right, so I picked her up in Guatemala City. I took about three weeks to get from the border to Guatemala, and we spent three weeks, well, we spent two weeks in Guatemala and not quite a week in Belize, and then I, we rode up to Cancun, Mexico, where she flew home from there, mostly because uh, the flight options were a lot better out of Cancun and a lot cheaper. Makes sense. And now, of course, you're on your return home. Right. Yeah, I've been about a week and a half since she flew home. I probably have another week and a half to two weeks uh, to get over back home. So that brings us to today or this morning. So I always like the question I find I keep asking people on these interviews is why? Why dirty, you know, windy, cold, hot motorcycle travel? Uh, why, um, you know, a country, uh, why a country like Mexico, why are, why is Bob doing this? Um, I travel this way for obviously a lot of reasons, but one reason to travel by motorcycle is like I said, just that sensory experience. And I genuinely enjoy riding my motorcycle. You know, I know you did, uh, Mexico highway 40, the Espinosa de Diablo, de Diablo. I mean, what a Amazing. spectacular motorcycle road. And I just enjoyed the hell out of that. So I, I just like riding. Um, but just like I said, the sensory experience, you, you notice more things when you're on a bike versus in a cage. Um, so there's that. The other thing I found, especially when I'm by myself, is that I meet people. Um, the, the motorcycle is a great conversation starter, whether it's at the gas station or you're checking into the hotel or you just stop for a meal, you always get to meet people and make relationships. And, and I really enjoy that part. Um, just the travel piece. I mean, I could do both of those things in the United States and I do, um, but I always want to experience new diff in different places. And one reason the, the meeting people and building relationships is so important to me is that 
I learn a lot about myself and about where I'm from by getting other people's uh, um, perceptions and observations. So, you know, you know, we had, we met uh, Tani and Katrine last night. I loved hearing about a Danish person's travels through the United States. It tells me a lot about my country. Very to, different to, view. To, yeah. yeah. So, um, so those are just some of the reasons I enjoy the travel and especially by the motorcycle. Um, Vicki has fallen in love with it for a lot of the same reasons and she likes it because it's, you know, we do get to go places off the beaten track. You know, if you want to go up a two track in the middle of nowhere, up a mountain, you right. can do that and meet people that have probably never met a you're, tourist. You're not at the mercy of a bus or a train schedule. Right. And if you see a road you like, take it. Mm -hmm. And if you feel like. I think I'm done for the day. You just find a place and, and call it a day. I mean, especially a lot of times when I do this, I'll carry camping gear. I did this time because Vicki and I were riding two up, you know, in Guatemala and Belize, but um, a lot, most of the time I'll bring my camping gear, even if I don't hardly ever use it. It's kind of just nice backup. Okay. And uh, I know that after uh, the plan is, the long-term plan is to do, you, you've got some ideas about flying to different countries and buying bikes. You're thinking Colombia is gonna be the next yeah. one. Okay. I think our next big trip will be Colombia. And if Vicky's still working, I'll go down a month or so ahead of time and buy a couple bikes, set them up, and uh, we'll go do whatever vacation time she has or She's also talked about trying to do some remote work. So um, it might be that we can, you know, extend that time because we don't have to be going fast. Right. Um, I'm really envious of your pace that you're doing on this trip where you go somewhere and you stay three to seven days. And, and that's almost every time you stop. Whereas uh, right now, you know, um, this four day stop in Mexico city will be the longest I'll be in one place on my way North. So not certainly not more than two nights in a row. It's a very distinctively different trip. Yeah. Schedule versus no schedule. Yeah. I've, I mean, I've come to that conclusion with a lot of these interviews. And, and you and I are a good comparison because we cross the same into Mexico at the same point, two days apart, pretty much same time. And I'm, coming back through essentially my fourth country and, you know, doing Mexico a second time and you're not even halfway through Mexico. Yet. Correct. <laughs> that is a good, yeah, that is a good comparison. It's yeah, right. it's just the difference of our goals. Yeah. Um, no right, no wrong. Just right. Different. Absolutely. All right. And, uh, but I am a little envious. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll let you know how it goes. I might start I'll be keeping track. I might pe start picking up speed. Who knows? Um, uh, but I do feel like it's going slow, which I, yeah. Uh, is something I think is the, I, th I don't know, when I talk to a lot of travelers, that's what they say. They want, they eventually want to come back and they want to do it slower. Wherever they've been, they want to come back right. and they want to slow down the pace. Right. How slow is up to them? But they always, they never say, I want to come back and do it faster. No. No one's ever said no. that. No. And there's a lot of other good logistical reasons and financial reasons to do so too. Right. So your costs go way down the slower you go. All right. Well, we're going to wrap it up, but if, uh, you're, you're a very, uh, you're a very wise man. I find Bob in that you have some philosophies that I think are, uh, legitimate. And if somebody were, uh, thinking about motorcycle traveling, what would be, what would be the number one tip you would give them if they haven't done it and you want them to try it? Well, um, Well, I guess my first piece of advice would be if you're from the United States, go to Baja. Baja, I, I describe Baja as the place to go learn overland travel with training wheels. It's so easy there. Uh, but as far as the lifestyle, boy, I don't know that I would ever push anybody into it, honestly. Um, you kind of got to have that itch. You can't. You can't really instill that in people. You can't force it. No, they either want to go see the world and meet people or they're comfortable where they're at. And that's okay. I think that travel is really, really enriching and it has absolutely been so for me. 
But, um, you know, the example I always use, and you've heard me say this already, is, is like a person that likes to do woodworking. They're happy as a clam in their, their nicely set up wood shop. And there's nothing wrong with that. If they get fulfillment through that, more power to them. Um, not for me, but, you know, that's their thing. So I, I don't think I would really push it on. And plus, you know, there's, sometimes there's too many of us out here as it is. <laughs> there's a lot of us out here right now. Yeah, I mean, it's surprising. Yeah. The thing that always surprises me when I travel around is how surprised people are to see me when I show up in a town. I'm like, there's got to have been 20 guys have to come in here on a motorcycle like that this year. I mean, so I can't be that uncommon. But Some still, places I can see it. Right. It depends where you go. Yeah. And one of the reasons we like the motorcycle, you can go to those towns where right. you haven't seen. Right. Well, Bob, thanks very much. Absolutely. Um, I know you're getting ready to go out there, heading north. That way. That way. Um, we wish you luck. And um, there you go. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.